For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney, and I'm here at Mobile World Congress with Terry McCabe of Mitel. Now, Terry, this show has been dominated by discussion of the Internet of Things, and I was curious, from Mitel's perspective, how will the IoT impact mobile networks? Well, I think it's going to have a huge impact on commercial models and the way in which the carrier relates to end customers and, and the applications and services that are created. We're already seeing the beginnings of that today when you look at the relationship between the carrier and the automotive sector. But we're going to see that, and I really believe we're going to see it distributed across many other industry sectors. And we're also seeing it in enterprise communications and the way in which that is becoming you know, a, a much more fluid relationship between the carrier and their large enterprise customers. People have higher expectations in terms of how sophisticated services will be. Carrier can't always meet that. And so it will take, let's say it will take an ecosystem of suppliers, intermediaries and carriers to bring forward either Internet of Things or more sophisticated communication services. If you look at the impact that, say, and Uber has had on customers' expectations of service, that's rippling through the whole industry. And, and you see that affect the way in which people design their enterprise communication and their B2C communication and their desire to bring information from, uh, let's say, machine sources into that customer service experience. Yeah, and another preeminent theme here at the show has been 5G, and this has a lot of promise to impact the way both service providers and enterprises do business. What are some of the opportunities associated with 5G from Mitel's perspective? Well, 5G is what everyone's talking about, and I think that's, you know, that's the risk with this show. Every year we have, you know, we have the hype topic, and then 12 months later we come back and say what happened. 5G is important, but it's also important to keep in mind 5G is a progression that will take place over the coming five years. Lots of people are talking about radio, they're talking about speeds, feeds, how you can lower the latency, increase the bandwidth, and that's hugely important. But if you look at the applications and the business relationships and how that's going to evolve, those steps can start to happen and are starting to happen now. If you look at network function virtualization and its evolution towards microservice architectures, again, this concept that a network can be sliced and those slices, initially they were targeted at different usage models, low latency, high bandwidth, high numbers of endpoints. But now you can take a slice and you can dedicate it to a specific commercial enterprise. So that could be an automotive player obtaining a slice of network and building their own dedicated set of services. That radically changes the relationship between, as I said earlier, it changes the relationship between the carrier and the end consumer because it may well be that the consumer isn't entering, to, entering into a commercial relationship with, with the carrier. They're entering into a relationship with automotive. They're entering into a relationship with a healthcare provider who happens to use an embedded communication service. And that's one of the things that, that Mitel has been doing quite a lot of work on recently as part of our accelerator program. We've been looking at this whole area of embedded communications, how to embed both unified communications and carrier communication services in specific vertical applications. You'll be seeing a lot more from us about that. And you know, I, I also know that Mitel announced during Mobile World Congress a big customer win, and I was hoping that you could share some of the details with us. Yes, um, Smart Friend in Indonesia launched their voice over LTE service uh, just last Friday. Perfect timing for us. Um, Smart Friend are a nationwide, now a nationwide LTE operator in Indonesia. They're moving from CDMA to LTE and doing so in a very aggressive, very progressive way. Um, we think it's extremely important, not just because it's a major customer for us in, in, in Asia, but it shows that the NFV approach, the virtualization, delivery on carrier, um, sorry, on commercial off-the-shelf equipment, can be achieved in markets outside of Western Europe and uh, North America. You know, we've seen to a large extent people target NFV at the tier one operator community 
We believe NFV brings benefits right across the spectrum of carrier scale. Now, whether you're a tier two, tier three customer, and NFV allows you to build downscaled solutions to actually use cloud technology, something that we've been, we've been leading the way on, using cloud technologies to have hosted solutions offering IMS services to a tier two, tier three operator, or in the case of SmartFriend, to rapidly build out a, an implementation of voice over LTE that has gone from contract to launch within 13 months. And we think that's quite a remarkable timescale when you look at the pace at which launches have taken place in Western Europe and North America. Yeah, increasing time to market of innovative new services like Volti has so much potential when we consider 5G. You discussed it as an evolution, so I was hoping we could look ahead to 2020 when perhaps 5G has become standardized and as the IoT forecast suggests, perhaps 20 billion connected devices. Taken as a whole, how does Mitel see this transforming the telecommunications landscape? Well, clearly, the innovation and the creation of those services is not going to be dominated by any one market participant. We're going to see a varied, a varied system where in some cases, let's say the tier ones, they will they will have end-to-end -end solutions. They'll take, some, they'll take some specific verticals and they'll build very complete solutions to address those. You look at some other markets, downscale markets, you look at markets where there are unique requirements or unique opportunities, and you'll find that it may not be the carrier who's leading. And the infrastructure of service creation and innovation may be a very diverse infrastructure, and you will have carriers hosting data centers connected to sliced networks and those data centers will be the locations in which innovative players bring their microservice components to create new user experiences. And you will see a combination of cloud data centers with edge data centers so that what has traditionally been you know, a mobile switching solution or a mobile switching center rather may well become an edge data center and you'll see things like high bandwidth data and low latency telemetry services pushed to that edge where you'll see other perhaps more commodity consumer services offered on a near global basis at, you know, at internet scale rather than locally within individual carriers. So it'll be a very diverse services model, but there will be a common approach which is agile, small service components integrated and orchestrated to create these end-to-end -end user experiences. Think about, you know, think about Uber applied to every customer service engagement that you see. That's what the future holds, where when you're walking through a space, you will interact with your surroundings and your surroundings will try to predict and anticipate your needs and desires. Um, virtual reality is you know, one of the other things everyone's talking about here, but I think the reality that's coming in 2020 is going to be much more interesting. So when we talk about network slicing and pairing these optimized slices with very specific cloud services, you mentioned vehicular clouds. What are some of the interoperability challenges to join all of these services and slices in a way that'll still create a seamless experience for the end user? Well, seamless experience for the end user is an interesting concept because when you think about it, where is the seamlessness important? If I'm, let's say I'm driving a General Motors vehicle or a Ford vehicle, the seamlessness for me is as I drive that vehicle, everywhere I go, that vehicle behaves and has the same services. The important seamlessness is across the application. It's not really between the applications. If I'm using a smartphone device or whatever an evolved smartphone becomes, yes, I want to have a consistent service and a consistent set of capabilities on that device. I think if I can take a small example, if you look at what's happened with multi-device services and the way in which with voice over Wi-Fi, voice over LTE, and this move towards multi-device that we've seen start in North America and Apple has been enabling it, 
you, you see this idea that the service is consistent, whether it's a Wi-Fi network or a carrier network. Think about Google Project Fi, combining Wi-Fi, um, T-Mobile's uh, MVN, their MVNO with T-Mobile and their MVNO with Sprint. Essentially, your relationship, your service experience is with Google. It's not with any of the underlying networks. Amazon, if you have a Kindle, who provides the data network for that? And perhaps, you know, looking at a, a 5G environment, we'll see more of those application-led experiences where the network may provide an end-to-end -end service, but it may also provide a set of APIs that expose network capabilities, and the application on top of that is the consistency that runs across geographic boundaries, global boundaries. So wherever I am in the world, whenever I want to interact with the service, it's there, my data is backed in the cloud, everything that I want to use is available on the, on the device that I prefer to use. I think that's, that's the seamlessness that's going to be most important. I also wanted to ask you about edge computing, which you mentioned a little earlier. From an end user perspective, this is a great way to get the content delivered to you in a, in a much more pleasing manner. So the, the value is clear to the user, but help me understand the value to an operator of moving content closer to the, the customer. Well, uh, backhaul, you know, I know that there's lots of dark fiber in the world, but still backhaul is expensive and uh, consumption of video has grown hugely. It it's dominates the, the broadband capacity requirements in every network. So the closer to the edge that you can cache data, the, the closer to the edge you can serve the, the customer from, the less backhaul and the less the less infrastructure that you have to require in your network to get that data to the customer. But I think, you know, looking at the Internet of Things and looking at the specific use cases that are evolving there, there are some use cases that simply cannot be delivered without using edge computing. So if you're looking at vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication um, through a network, so, you know, my car communicates with your car to say I'm decelerating, therefore your car can smoothly interact with it. That sort of communication needs to be handled in the network edge. And you know, some of this depends on, on the geography of the country. If you scale nationwide in a small country, the edge isn't that, you know, isn't that big an issue. But if you're in the United States, if you're in Indonesia, in India, Putting the data close to the edge doesn't just make it faster, it makes it more reliable. It gives you resilience because you may have poor quality backhaul, you may have expensive backhaul. And anything you can do close to the network edge is going to, is going to improve the quality of the user experience, as you said, but it's also going to lower the cost of implementation in the long run. You have this initial cost of creating that infrastructure. But it is also going to present challenges if you have application vendor components running in a carrier edge environment. Today, when we talk about edge computing, we are predominantly talking about carrier infrastructure running in the edge. A hybrid environment that's made up of carrier infrastructure and those components from specific vertical applications. Now that, that's going to be a challenge. Security challenge, operation management challenge, but I think it's going to be important to overcome that as part of the 2020 vision. Well, Terry, I really appreciate you taking the time to share Mitel's perspective on these important themes that are coming out of Mobile World Congress. Thank you. Great for the opportunity.